Okay then, so in the last lesson we talked about context and we set up a new context and context provider in this cart context file. And this cart context provider is wrapping our entire application so that any component inside it can access the store value. So we did that from the cart page and it worked. But we also want to access this store from the product details page so we can edit it and add new products to it whenever we click on the add to cart button. So let's go to the product component to do this. So the first thing I want to do is create a button down here so that when we click on that button, we can add a product to the cart. So we will say add to cart inside that button. We also need to give this a class of BTN because we added that global style in the index.css file, remember? And also we will say on click is equal to some kind of function. We'll call that add product. Now we need to make that function up here. So we'll say const add product is equal to a function and it's inside here now that we need to use this thing set items now actually i'm also going to get rid of these products these dummy ones because now we're going to start adding real products instead so let me save that but yeah we need to use this set items function inside here but we also need the items as well so we need both of these values inside the product component i'll tell you why we need this shortly but to do that, we can use this function, use cart context. So let me go back to the product component and up here, we shall say const and we want to grab the items and also set items and they come from use cart context. Click on this to import it at the top like so and invoke it. So what do we want to do inside this? Well, basically, we want to add the new product to the array, the items array, and we can use set items to do that. However, I want to do one more thing first. I want to check if this product already exists inside that array, because if it already exists in the array, then I don't want to add another object with the same product in it. Instead, what I would like to do is use that quantity property on the product and increase that instead. Does that make sense? And that's why we grabbed this items thing right here to check. Do we currently have a product with this ID, this particular product in this items array? If we do, then just increase the quantity property by one. If we don't, then we'll just add the item to the array. So first of all, we want to check if product exists. So we'll say const exists is equal to items dot find so this is just a javascript array method and we fire a function for each item in the array and each time we fire a function we grab the product that we're currently iterating and we can do something with it so i'm going to say inside this function product p dot id is equal to product dot id so what am i doing well we're trying to find if the current product we, we well we're trying to find if the current product which we have access to exists in this array so we use the find method to do that we fire a function for each product in this array if we return true for that particular product then it means it's in the array and we're going to return true if p.id, which is the current product we're iterating inside this array, is equal to the ID of the product right here, because that's what we're viewing on a page. So if this is true now, then it means that we have that product. It exists. So what I will do is say if exists, then we'll do something. And we just want to increase the quantity of that product. So we'll say inc quantity of product. So to do that, we can say set items and we'll set it using a function whereby we get access to the previous value. So we'll say and remember, first of all, we need to pinpoint which position in the array that we want to update. So to do that, we will say grab the product whereby the product 
dot id is equal to the product dot id so similar to what we did here so that's the element we want to update then after that what property do we want to update well it's the quantity property and then after that we want the new value and we'll update that value using a function whereby we take the current quantity value and we add one to it so return q plus one does that make sense so we're setting the items this first argument dictates which position in the array we're updating well it's the one where the product ids match then we're updating the quantity product or the quantity property rather and then right here we fire a function to update that quantity property this is the previous value of the quantity and we're returning quantity plus one to increase it all right so that's if it exists now if it doesn't exist so if not exists then we'll do something different and all we want to do is add the new product in this case so again we'll use set items to do that and then inside here we'll do an array and we just want the current items so dot 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 items and then add the new one as well so that's going to be dot 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 product so we're taking the current product for this page and then we also want a quantity property on that if we can spell it and it's going to start out at one because this is the first one we've added and now that exists if we try to add a new one we'll do this instead and just increase the quantity so that's done i think let's now try this out in a browser i'm going to go to the home page and i'm going to try adding some products so let's go to this white t-shirt add to cart in fact we'll add it twice and then let's go to the cart and we can see we have two white t-shirts all right let's try something else black hoodie and then we'll go and add a white hoodie then we'll go and add another black hoodie in fact so we should have two of those and now we can see two black hoodies two white t-shirts and also one white hoodie awesome so this is all working cool 